Welcome back to the channel guys. Today what we're going to be doing is continuing work on the Mark 1 Rabbit. It's going to be going VR6 Turbo. I've been having a really really hard time figuring out the fuel pump situation on that. So I got a brand new tank and then I was going to make like a surge tank set up and all that and use the uh, stock in tank pump but those in tank pumps only come on cabriolets and they're getting really 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 hard to find. So I decided instead of having all that external surge tank set up, um, I always had it in my mind that it would be really smart to have like a uh, Mark IV style fuel tank in there. And then uh, about a month ago, I found a guy, uh, I'll link it in the description. It's called uh, Dumpy Bunny. And what he does is he custom makes all kinds of parts specifically for, for Volkswagens and mostly for actual Mark I's. This is a completely billet piece. He sells it in aluminum and steel. I got the steel version. So what this does is this allows you um, a flange to weld into any, any fuel tank. If you got an aluminum fuel tank, steel fuel tank, and it adapts Mark IV, Mark V, Mark VI, whatever style has this kind of like a screw on cap. See? And now the fuel pump will sit in there. So now that I have this, what I'm going to be doing is I'll mark this out on my fuel tank and cut it, weld this to my fuel tank. I have a brand new fuel tank. It's never had fuel on it, so it'll never be it's like a safety issue. But uh, just keep that in mind. That's why we're doing what we're doing today. So I went to the junkyard and I got a Mark IV fuel pump. And these are good because they have a little springy action in here. So no matter how deep the tank is, you get about that much travel. You know what I mean? And then also, it's got a uh, factory level sensor. It's got uh, big wires on the fuel pump. It's got an inlet and an outlet. You know, it's pretty easy stuff. And these are really, really easy to get. Just make sure that you get the OEM pump unit. Now what I'm going to show you is how to take this apart. And then what we're going to be fitting or trying to fit is a uh, TI automotive wall roll, whatever you want to call it. But this is a genuine Hellcat pump. This is good for like 900 naturally aspirated horsepower. And I think it's like 700 forced induction. So power goals for the Rabbit are about five to 600 horsepower. So this should be perfectly fine. And we're going to be doing that with pump gas. We're not using E85, but this is E85 compatible. If you were doing E85, I think this is good to about 500 horsepower. They do have um, bigger versions of it, but then they don't have like check valves in it. And the check valve is what keeps uh, pressure in your lines after you turn the car off. Um, you would have to put one in, you know, down line somewhere. But let's get to taking it apart. Also have a, a couple random hoses and the Walbro fuel pump kit. I got all this stuff from uh, Summit Racing. And I got this from Dumpy Bunny. So I've already taken this apart, but I'm just retaking it apart to show you guys. Cut the uh, line off of the fuel pump right here. Pop that off. And then um, you should replace this hose too. So I cut it off up there, pulled that off. And then you have two wires that go directly to the, to the fuel pump. And they got little tangs on them. They're like right in here you just kind of pull them up and then these will come right off the pump so then you flip around to the back side and you have four seven mils save all these because they're special screws and fuel resistant so now you'll have the whole assembly off like this and you can just uh put it to the side so then your next thing to do is to pop off this cover you'll see clip right here 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 Stick it in, be gentle with it. So now this will come off. Now you can set this to the side as well. And then uh, to get the fuel pump out, you actually have to come down here and take this basket off. You just kind of work it around. And then now the fuel pump usually is stuck in there because it has three O-rings. You have one on top. Then there's one on the bottom. That goes right here. Uh, never cover up that if you're putting one of these in or a DW pump. And then there's always one O-ring down here at the bottom. All right guys, so looking at this, um, I put the uh, stock housing back on so I could see where the hose 
normally routed and I just marked it with Sharpie. Sharpie here, Sharpie there. That way I know when I put this pump in, should be about right there. You can see it's loose. Um, I'll figure that out later. But the biggest thing is getting this where it needs to sit. Here's the inlet, here's the outlet, and then uh, how it sits on the little basket. So this little sock, whatever you want to call it, um, that sock is going to be replacing this part on the stock housing on the bottom. And then down in here, I don't know if you'll be able to see it. Sure, just put my finger in there. But right up here, this is all a raised edge. It's a, it sticks up pretty high. So what I believe I'm going to do is right now you can see down in there, I did mark with a Sharpie. Um, that's where this outlet's gonna be. And I'm gonna make the holes for this outlet first and get it pretty lined up. Then once I get it lined up, um, I'll figure out a way to cut that raised lip out. I don't know, maybe I can like stick a Dremel down in there with a cutoff disc. I'll figure it out and show you. Long donger. Keep it away from the filter. Yeah. See if it slides in. It's pretty snug. Have this hole drilled, it works really good, but I need to get this raised edge out. So not everybody's gonna have this, but this is a body saw, and I'm just gonna saw all the way around this hole like that. Have this sitting in place. And then I'm just gonna try to drop the fuel pump in on it. That's it. So the reason these things are so good is because uh, the return fuel, which is coming in, goes right into here. So it's basically like you're making your own surge tank. So this would be really good for a Mark 1 tank because there's no baffling at all. So everything that's pulled out is gonna go right back in here and kind of stay contained. So you'll have better uh, drivability when uh, the tank's low. All I have to do now is figure out how to keep this from like wobbling back and forth, how to keep it contained basically. This might look like a little bit of a hack, um, but because of this space in here, what I'm going to use, I'm using a stainless steel uh, hose clamp. It'll take up that space. I put it in here and I marked it exactly where it needed to go. So I'll pull this pump back out, tighten that hose clamp up, and then I'll shove it back down in here and it'll always be in the same exact location. Now you could get like the, the foam kind of like sock and put it around it but even though they're fuel safe i've i've seen them degrade um they also shrink this should be pretty permanent and um it's always going to be locked in place with the uh the bottom so i don't think this will ever be an issue and uh i'll be pretty confident in it i heated up a uh, screwdriver and took two holes here and two holes there and then uh, when this is in place, however it is, I'm going to zip tie. First I'll get this on, get the basket on, and then I will zip tie from here to here through the hose clamp. That way it kind of locks it in place and keeps it from wanting to pop up. So this will be the final variation of it. You can see it's really centered um, with those holes. I was able to wrap zip ties around the stainless hose clamp. That way it does not move. It's pretty good in there and it's, that way it's not gonna pop up, not gonna shift, not gonna fall over. Uh, there's plenty of zip ties in factory uh, fuel tanks, so it shouldn't be a problem. And then the little screen's right on it, no problem. Uh, this little piece will be on it, but um, you can see it shifts over and again, uh, this is going to sit on the bottom and the sender is what's actually going to spring load and go down. So now I can just uh, final assemble this and then I'll uh, get the hoses on and we'll be done. So you got the pump wire on it. On the Mark IV housing, it's the black wire is red or positive. And then uh, always stagger them. That way there's no way they'll ever touch. The hose that comes with it is a little smaller than the actual pump so you just got to heat it up with a heat gun. Pretty good clamp. Oh, 
Oh yeah, I fucked myself. See it? This needs to go on first. Mm -hmm. There's a problem right there. Hopper in. And you can heat it up. Put it on. There it is, not the Hellcat pump, Mark IV pump that's going into a Mark I. Sweet. So here's the uh, weld on pump fitting for the Mark IV, and it's going to go onto the Mark I tank. There's usually a gasket in there, but I'm just doing this to show you. No. Yeah, it's now this would be like totally self-contained. I'll have the level sensor because Mark One level sensors suck. It'll be constantly full because this is basically like a little surge tank in the Mark IV. It's got the sock on the bottom so it'll filter itself, and it's spring-loaded so it'll adjust to the height of the tank. So I think it's that'll be going into the Mark One. You'll see that at a much later date. Hellcat pump in a Mark IV fuel basket going into a mark one so like comment subscribe there'll be more stuff like this next thing on this will be uh, welding that into the tank one of these days whenever we get moved